Chad, you're one of the biggest users of technology and data in the industry. So tell us a bit about how you're using that to change the way you're breeding. Yes, any um, measurement underpins what we do with the breeding and so the use of electronic tags and, and data recording uh, that is so simple to use now uh, means it's very easy to produce breeding values and breeding values with high accuracy to make better decisions with. So can you give us some examples of how this is getting you greater and more accurate data? Uh, for sure, at the bottom end of the stud joining we have syndicate bred animals so there's a group of maybe four or five rams uh, joined to use and their progeny are measured knowing that their father is only one of five and there may not be any maternal data to that particular low end group but at the top end there's uh, great depth to the pedigree and so by introducing DNA for example we get really easy access to maternal data right through the stud uh, which is the step we've taken to then produce high accuracy breeding values which is critical to make uh, high accuracy selection decisions with. Because some of your rams have data in sort of the 80 and 90 percent accuracy, is that right? Yeah, so well pedigreed animals will produce accuracy around 70 percent uh, with just their raw data going into the system and then those sires or all those dams, once they have progeny measured in the system as well, their accuracy creeps up into the 90s. And so some of the top end sires we're using have thousands of animals quite literally measured in the in the system uh, spread across 10 or 12 studs and so their accuracy goes up to the high 90s, 98 or even 99 percent for some traits. So what are the traits that you're focusing on? We have a balance of traits Ben, we've been talking about balance for a while. Uh, growth at different stages and is very important to us. Uh, fleece weight and wool quality also very important to us but muscle and fat, the, the traits that produce condition score to allow animals to perform under tough conditions uh, like we're in at the moment as well as the good conditions uh, that sort of underpins uh, the traits we select for. Chad, we've spent a couple of days with the Rams. They're an absolute credit to you. You've got incredible lines. So tell us a bit about some of the sire lines that are on offer. Oh, we have we have some wonderful uh, sire lines in the mix this year. And, and uh, 652 was a sire we bought from Mujapin. He's a 12 drop Ram. Uh, we've used him extensively here. The first taste we had of his progeny last year uh, have left us wanting more. And so we, we, took, we went out on a limb and joined uh, 300 odd ewes. So we've got uh, something like 140 sons of 652 available to us and the best of those will be in the sale this year. How does this group of rams rate you know, against the industry average? Oh, they're fantastic. The, uh, the sire himself, 652, is a top 1%er for quite a lot of traits. Uh, he's right up there for fleece weight, he's in the top 15% of the industry, but he's a top 1% ram for early growth, for muscle, fat uh, and staple length, all very important traits to us, uh, as well as being exceptionally good for structure, worm resistance, uh, scrotal circumference. It's, it's an extremely impressive row of figures and the progeny he's producing, having been crossed to stud wool use here, is uh, is a balance of traits that you know, I, I think is really leading the show. And you've got about 60 rams in the sale this year, Bone? Oh, I would expect to have at least 60 in the sale, Ben. There's a heap to choose from, uh, and so the best of those will be in the sale. So another group of rams that we've been looking at, 1173, um, he's had a great influence on your flock, hasn't he? Sure has. He's another outside sire, bought from Learson. Bought him in 2012, so he's been in the system for quite a while. So we have sons of 1173 and grandsons of 1173. There's, there's great depth of this sire line coming through on the sale this year. This is a sire line where fleece weight is his strength. He's a top uh, sort of 6% of the industry for fleece weight with a, a really high quality wool, which was the attraction of this animal. Uh, he also has well above average growth fat and muscle. So it's a balance of traits that is uh, an extremely valuable uh, mix to be offering. And having had this sire line in the mix for so long, we're, we're joining him very accurately now and he'll have, he'll have a wing of rams in the sale. It could be something like 40, 50 of them. Chad, 1723, a ram that you've sold semen to to the Falkland. Um, again, tell me a bit about that line. Very interesting ram. Uh, it was semen from that sire that went to the Falklands as an unproven sire, so we've used him here as well. And there's some really exciting stuff coming through. He was joined to some top end maiden ewes, just a small group of, so he's got probably eight or 10 uh, sires that'll be in the sale this year. And, and there's some really impressive wolves coming through on, on those boys. So you went to the Falklands to see how these sire lines went. Um, tell us a bit about that. Oh, we had a great trip now to the Falklands the end of last year. Uh, and 1723 was a ram that I thought really stood out. They're only young lambs when we saw them. They look very impressive, very soft, long wools and in great condition under a very challenging environment. Very different to probably Australian conditions, but uh, in the 50s for latitude, it's cold and windy all of the time. And these lambs I thought stood up very well. Chad, another group of rams side by 850, he's been you know, getting you some pretty good results across Australia. He has, he's been doing very well. He, he did particularly well in the sire evaluation in Balmoral in Victoria and also in South Australia just recently uh, with growth and wool quality being two of his real strengths. Uh, but he's also got a, a real bare breech area. So as a step away from mules in this place, an, an obvious choice. 
that Falmoral trial, that tests these rams under quite harsh conditions, don't they? They do, they do, and that's, it's an important part of what we're putting together. We need animals that can perform not just when conditions are good, but also when the pressure's on. Uh, we are seeing some size perform, perform particularly well when conditions are very good, but the same size performing pretty poorly when the pressure's really on. So we need to make sure we're breeding in that insurance through condition score so sheep can handle themselves when the pressure really is on. So Chad, the offering as a whole, how are they sort of rating on data-wise? Oh, they're standing up very well. They're all either on or well above the industry average for the traits that we measure. Uh, but the interesting part is that we can look at a group of, of animals and phenotypically they may be quite consistent, but then when we break them down and get into their data, there's, there's a big variation amongst it. And I know there's groups of animals that have figures that are well behind for muscle, but also top two or three percent of the industry in that same contemporary group. So we need to be able to identify those animals and technology makes it easy to do that. And from that, we make far more accurate breeding decisions to increase the genetic progress of the stud. It's been really interesting, isn't it? We've been looking at rams over the last couple of days and you know you've got two rams that look pretty much identical but genetically from DNA and recording they're quite different aren't they? They are, they are and that's the, that's the power of technology. It's making these decisions easy to make, it's making data collection easy and it's making genetic progress easy and that's the path we certainly want to continue on.